All right, guys. So my name is Brooke Drum, and I'm with PrinterBot. I'm the CEO founder of PrinterBot. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about my story because I think there's something uh, worth talking about a little later, and then I'm going to show you uh, something that we're coming out with okay, that we're just announcing for the first time today. So I started out in 2011 kind of with the realization that I was a maker. And the big question is, you know, what's the definition of a maker? Well, I was a guy that really wanted to get involved in the maker movement. I had bought Make Magazine, that's step one, right? <laughs> Buy Make Magazine. And then I realized, like, right off the bat that A, I'm not smart enough, and B, I don't have any tools. So um, after reading through the magazine, you know, there were some projects that I thought, man, I could do that. Um, then there was, like, electronic stuff that I was like, forget it. There's no possible way I'll be able to do it. And then there was some that I really wanted to do, but I didn't have the right tools. When you go out to my garage, um, you see a lot of hand-me-down tools, stuff all the way back to like my grandpa. I've always loved tools, but I didn't have really any good stuff. So I thought, someday, I'm going to make the money and I'm going to have good tools. I'm the guy in the mall um, back in the 80s that would just stand there for hours and watch that like 27, you know, that, that big, like, it was a mill, it was a saw table, it was like an infomercial right in the middle of the mall with this crazy <coughs> shopsmith. Okay, I loved that, I was like, it does everything. But I could never afford it, right? So I, I decided after I saw Brie Pettis on the cover of Make Magazine that, you know what, that's a tool I might be able to afford and if I just had that tool, that 3D printer, maybe I could make other tools. And so I was all in. So I, I ordered a MakerBot a cupcake and I got it. And I told Bree this, uh, uh, it didn't go well. Um, I was on the kitchen table uh, with my kids, and we got to the part where we had to start soldering. And I kind of knew how to solder, um, but my boy, who was six, didn't. So I had to teach him how to solder, and uh, it was a little dangerous. And anyway, at the end, I decided, you know, I think I can do better than this, the cupcake. So um, I set out to kind of make my own art. I checked out RepRap, um, I built one of those. And I thought, okay, now I've got a tool here and I'm kind of finding my way to my own design of a 3D printer, um, but I still don't have the, the smarts that I need to, to make something this complicated. I had a tool and I needed, I needed to learn. So the first thing I did was I started a meetup group. And so my, the mess, one of the messages that I always, when I talk to people I always promote is one of the best tools to have around you when you're trying to make something is people. And so I, I formed a meetup group and I just said, hey, we're going to become experts in 3D printers. Who's in? And the first week, you know, two people showed up. And I was like, well, at least two people showed up. You know what I mean? That's awesome. So anyway, um, to fast forward, I met some of the most smart, incredible, deeply talented people that really knew tons more about what I was trying to do than me. They knew electronics, they knew firmware, they, they knew how to like code stuff in Linux, right? Which I was a uh, total noob. So anyway, I really, the first tool, I, I thought the 3D printer was gonna be the big deal. The first tool that I recognized that changed my company and, and what was to happen in, in later months and years was the people. And so we, we uh, Kind of together, we got together this printer, that original, like the, the first design. And yeah, it was a 3D printed printer. And um, I want to put it on Kickstarter, and boom, um, that happens. So I was in business. And you know what I was really excited about? I was so excited that I get to buy tools now. <laughs> so I'm not kidding. Like, my wife was like in tears, freaking out because how are we going to do this? And I was like, just let them keep buying it, it's fine, more tools. So I, rem I remember like this was a, a weird day when all of that happened and kind of finalized and the reality starts to set in that I gotta make thousands of printers. Oh my gosh, um, it was overwhelming. But when I arrived underneath Old Town Pizza in Lincoln, California and I had 1,000 square foot of shop with a, like a roll up door on the back, and I got to fill that space from scratch, man. I was so stoked. <laughs> so I started buying tools. Now, um, it turns out I don't know much about tools either. So um, I just asked everybody, what would you buy, what would you buy, what would you buy? And so I, I ended up finding out I was kind of a cheapskate, right? So I, I tell this story because I want you to know the, 
that Printerbot is kind of, it's kind of another word for, or at least the culture at my company ends up being really who I am. So I want you to understand who I am. When we talk about makers, there's, it's so broad, and it's almost so broad, you don't even really know uh, if the two people that are talking are really on the same page, because maybe, like, I value really cheap s stuff. You know what I mean? Here's what I'm saying. Um, some 3D printers are expensive, and some are really cheap. Right? I go for the value in the middle, and that is how I'm trying to build my printers. So when I talk about the markets that PrinterBot is really trying to reach, it's really people that are really value conscious. That it's not a professional printer, right? I mean, look at this thing. That's where it started. Can you believe this? I still have that coffee table and couch. And one guy tried to uh, buy me a co coffee table because it looks so crappy. <laughs> My wife was like, oh, I love that table. But anyway, um, it started started kind of ugly, but um, there was, it was 500 bucks, and uh, it worked out really well. It's funny how far I've come in two years. Um, I've come $99, so it's $599. I, I consider this our flagship, and this is the what I call printer box simple, and it's finally made of metal. Now, um, the tools that I bought were laser cutters and, you know, all kinds of drill presses. And, and uh, I had four laser cutters and a, and a fifth one that kind of worked for me in town. Um, I went to Lowe's and I bought a lot of stuff. I just could not bear to put down like $40,000 for a mill or something like that. I found people that actually knew how to run the equipment. And so now we manufacture locally and we do, a lot of the parts on this are um, machined. It, I'm kind of hiding the machine parts on that right now. But uh, this is folded aluminum and steel. Now, the reason I'm putting this picture up, I just like to keep it very, very simple. It's called a simple. But um, I want you to see that two years of iteration, <laughs> it, it's just like, it looks like night and day. But it was the tools that I added to my um, repertoire that I was able to do it. And to be honest, I couldn't use the tools to make this. I had to hire Microform Precision in Sacramento. Um, they have this amazing laser cutter there that is like the size of a, a house, it seems like. And I asked the guy, what is it, it going to set me back to get one of these? He said, $750,000. <laughs> I was like, how about I just pay you to build these, or to cut this metal out? Um, he showed me a water jet, which I've always wanted to own a water jet. Um, and he's like, don't don't get a water jet. I'm like, why? He's like, I'm repairing this right now. The bill is $200,000. So I'm like, man, so what tools can I afford? Um, well, I, I want you to know that today is the first time I'm announcing it in public um, that I, I am going to have Printerbot become uh, a company that produces tools that I want to use and tools for makers. Um, I need to learn more about CNC, and so this is our if you can't see it real well, did I jump past it? There. This is in the fall. Uh, PrinterBot is not going to sell just printers. We're going to let the people like me that want to learn more about a CNC to uh, get into CNC. Now, with my company, I've learned some a couple of a couple of pretty valuable lessons, and, and one is this: it's extremely important to set your expectations, uh, the expectations for your customers. It is so important. Um, here's one case in point right here. Uh, I said I would ship in February, but I, my goal was uh, to make 50 in my garage with hand tools in you know, one cupcake <laughs> and a wrap wrap. Um, people were very upset because they didn't understand how Kickstarter worked and they didn't understand that when you, uh, at, at least early on, it was a real problem. Um, it's getting better, but they didn't understand, now I have to make 1100 and it's going to take longer. And so they were very upset. Um, I talked in this uh, briefly about how it gets really good prints. Well, that's subjective, right? So there, I want to be clear about this product. And in fact, just to be clear on this one, this is what I call a great choice for the beginner getting into 3D printing. Is it the magical, you know, Jesus 3D printer that, you know, is everything to everyone? Uh-uh. No, no, not at all. Uh, it, mattered, it matters so much how much uh, technical capabilities the user has, right? And so that's a barrier that, that we're trying to overcome. How are we overcoming it? Well, right now I think the maker movement in general has a couple of problems that we're going to have to figure out 
before we can drive this whole thing really <coughs> forward to grow across <coughs> all kind of technical capabilities. Uh, we always throw this term around consumers. I mean, um, I was talking to a guy downstairs earlier, and he said, you know, we're trying to take 3D printing to consumers. Is it ready yet? And I said, not, I know what you're trying to ask. You're trying to ask, you know, can my mom use a 3D printer, and can your neighbor, and can the average school teacher? And the answer is no, 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 no. Um, it's still hard, right? And if you think 3D printing is hard, let me tell you, CNC is hard, too, <laughs> all right? So, but I want to learn. So who am I uh, targeting this machine with? I'm not, I'm not targeting people that are, um, want the absolute cheapest hardware they can possibly buy. Um, build your own, or get a Shape Oco, that's really cheap. Um, but there's a problem when you get into paper printing and CNC, and it's software. It's software. Who in here has used a CNC machine right now? Now, who in here is really good at only the same people are eligible to answer this question? <laughs> Those of you that own a CNC machine, uh, which one of you really consider yourself a master with the 3D design, the CAD CAM software? You see the problem? There's like two guys in here that all of you that want to see and she should go to right after this. <laughs> in fact, if you two could come see me right after this. <laughs> anyway, so am I trying to be a professional machine? You know, Shop, ShopBot is a great company. They have great machines. They know a lot more about CNC than I do. Let me be honest. See how we're setting the expectations here? But I want a CNC, and I don't have X amount of dollars to spend on it, you know? I want the guy in a garage to be able, that can, can go to Lowe's and like pick out a nice drill press and saw table and some nice uh, drills and stuff. Um, that guy, I want him to be able to strap a router to this machine right here and be able to use it. So, enough of me talking. I thought it would be fun to actually show you the machine in person. So come up. We'll, we'll be out at the uh, showcase later too. And uh, you can ask us questions and in fact, Here's how you get to ease of use with 3D printers and with CNC. You find a brilliant software guy, and that's not me. So Mick is here, he's over here, and uh, I asked him, hey, do you wanna, you wanna say something? He was like, no. So you don't get to talk to Mick right now, but uh, he will, he'll be around later if you wanna ask him any questions. So we are partnering, he owns a company called Maker Toolkit, and we're, uh, he is in Davis, and by the way, he was one of the members of my meetup group, See when you get people together, what can happen? Um, and uh, he, he actually, there's <laughs> a quick story about him. So it is early, I'm talking my cupcake was on the desk, like one other guy's cupcake, and a few like half bit, and when I say a few, like 20 half built <laughs> Prusa Mendels, you know, which is, I think they're still unbuilt. Um, but he, he came up to me, he's like, man, this would be so cool if you could use your phone, because I love the idea of mobile for 3D printing. And if you could just use your phone, and he goes, oh, I, look at what I did. I like programmed uh, this thing, and I can, I can use my phone to control my printer. That was like before I even did the Kickstarter. So he was, he's been working on this for a long time. But that type of technology where you have, and I'll just, so this right here is um, a, a box, a control box. And inside here, you can come see it. There's a little touch screen and uh, an emergency stop. But inside here, there is the tiny G, thank you very much, a Synthios, right, or Synthetos, Synthetos. I always say it wrong, Synthetos. It's a really interesting board because they're really good at math, and the acceleration of these is cool. So there's that, and there's Raspberry Pi, and we're all talking about Pi, and it runs a little server. So you can, now here's a tool that this maker understands, the iPad, right? I don't have CAD CAM that I have to figure out the tool chain and, and pay all the the expensive prices, because honestly, I'm not gonna do super complicated stuff. I'm gonna do stuff that's pretty simple. And I'm not gonna replace, you know, a big $40,000 mill like one of my engineers has at his house, in his shop. I'm gonna do simple stuff. But, um, let me log in. Now, uh, this is, uh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> anyway, so this is the, just the browser running, uh, connected via Wi-Fi, and it's running the machine. So. Right here. I'm going to stay close to Mick. Oh, yeah. 
So anyway, I want, if you guys want to see this, it's pretty cool because you actually have um, the ability to draw right on the touch screen. It's, it's set up more for the desktop right now, and we'll, we'll do it so it's a little easier with the touch. But anyway, so you can draw right here. You can import an SVG file. Um, you can set your paths. And this is kind of the workflow, I think, in my mind, is a simpleton with CNC. You got to draw something or have a drawing. You got to figure out, you know, what tool and material you're using, but also which side of the line am I cutting to because these things have a curve, you know. Um, so you can do that all right here. You can set what, what bit and all that. And then it actually shows you like this 3D rendering when it's moving. So you can make it move here. But anyway, so it's all there on the software. And you don't have to buy anything else. It's just going to come as a package. If you like the hardware and you want to buy the hardware, that's fine. Because I don't want to get in the middle of a debate about, you know, are you using open source software or not and all that. The, the fact is that if you want it to be easy to use, um, look for a company that's trying to integrate this stuff and solve the problems that they know you're going to run into <laughs> together all in one. So there'll be a package and then there'll be hardware um, as well. But I love the fact that you can pick up an iPad, any browser, even your phone, and just start cutting. It's a little loud. Sounds so cool though. So anyway, it works. And we actually did cut uh, on this. This is an early, it's, we're going to do machine aluminum. We're not going to do wood. Um, we're going to do, uh, we're going to change a bunch of stuff. But we have to build first. It's interesting that when you own a 3D printer company, you think, I've got a tool now that can build other tools. So I can like print a router, a CNC router. No, you can't. <laughs> you actually need metal? But to do that, so there's a lot of metal under here, and we even need to add more. So we're going to release this in the fall. Only got time for maybe one or two questions. Um, the price, I'm not telling you, um, but it'll be in the fall, and it'll be quite affordable. We think you'll like the price. But we're excited to, to be here. I hope I get to meet you later. Any questions? It doesn't have to be about the CNC. It could be about Printerbot or whatever, but let's just take one or two questions for a couple of minutes. Yeah? going to be scalable. <laughs> is what going to be scalable? That. This right here? Yeah. So microform precision. Oh, you mean you, uh, you mean not the number of units, but like the size? Precisely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to do a 4 by 8 sheet. That's the tool I want, right? Because I, I honestly just want to cut chairs and tables and shelves and simple stuff like that, but I need a big thing. But to be honest, that's easy for me to say right now because and there's very unique problems to something that large. So, you know, that is my intention, but I'll tell you what I will do. I will sell this in the fall. Yeah. Any, anybody else? Another question? Just one more? Good to be among makers, guys. All right, thank you.